Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the August 2021 meeting of the Houston County Historical Society. Uh, if you would, please silence your phones. There's also a uh, sign-in sheet being passed around so you get credit for being here. We want to thank the Arlington Cumberland Presbyterian Church for the invitation to hold our meeting here tonight. Uh, uh, in continuation of our celebration of the 150th year of our county's formation. Uh, Mr. Randall French, birthday boy, <laughs> if you would lead us in the pledge to the flag, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Did everyone get the minutes from the last meeting? If you did not, I have a couple of extra copies. Um, if you did not receive those, check with Melissa. Make sure you're on the list that she's got your correct email. There was only one correction that I saw. about the potluck meal on December the 14th. It's, it should be potluck meal. It says potluck mean, but maybe a mean meal. <laughs> there's, there's another one too on the book that I, that the guys have talked about, the 1964 instead of 1864. Okay, all right. Sorry for that. Okay. Um, is there a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, Leah, do you have a treasurer's report, please? I do. We have income of 27 cents in interest. We had $45 in books. We had expenses of 27.50 on postage, and we renewed our PO box for $66. We've got just over 3,000 in the money market and just over 11,000 in our CD. Thank you, Sarah. I'll motion to accept those. So moved. A second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Okay. The dues, remember, are $10 per year per household or $50 per lifetime per household. Um, I've had a few people to uh, ask for a few moments for announcements. Donald, if you would go ahead with your announcement, please. Okay. We're going to try and do a World War II program similar to what we did with World War I. We're probably a couple of years out from that. But we're going to have probably over 800 people or 800 veterans that were from Houston County that was in World War II. So if you all could look in your histories and stuff and put together your, your dad's or grandfather's information and stuff and share that with us, we'd appreciate it. Hopefully we'll be able to do something like we did at World War I out at the Ridge on that and include everybody in the program on that. But you can contact myself, Deborah. Uh, Melissa's at the archives five days a week now. We'll be glad to scan anything and just give it right back to you if you can share that information with us. But we would appreciate it. Thank you. Ski? Um, last time I talked about a couple of programs that were going to be at the home place in Lancaster and Lakes on the 22nd, 21st and 22nd of August. Well, they've both been canceled because of COVID and they won't allow anybody in their theater. So they got canceled. And also, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but we had two Hummingbird banding schedule. One was at Tennessee National Wildlife Refuge and one at Cross Creeks. They've both been canceled as of today. So that's why I'm here to cancel stuff. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Jerry Bobby? Yes, I hired Other Dave. Other birthday boys. Well, thank you. Hired Day called me, uh, um, let's see. No, he called me on Sunday and said that they're going to have the Danville reunion this year. And it's going to be held October the 2nd, which is the first Saturday of October. And it's going to be at the McKinnon Community Center. And he wanted everybody to know that they were welcome. They're going to serve meals at lunch. And they're going to have a little program down there. But he would like all of us to join if we were capable or if so wish. But they canceled it last year because of the COVID. But he did say that they are planning on having it this year. Okay. We'll put that on our calendar. Mm -hmm. Melissa? Uh, first, let me the minutes. Does anyone know a Charles McDowell? 
you went to Clarksville. He was, okay, he was, his minutes are coming back. So if anybody knows his address, you can get it to me. I'd be glad to send this back out to him. <laughs> Uh, and I have a couple of things from the archives. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, tell everybody about was um, we got contacted by the uh, Wilson County um, and Tennessee State Fair. They're having their fairs conjoined this year together. Um, and so they sent out a letter to all of the county mayors and they wanted to include <coughs> all the counties actually in this fair this year. So they asked for two things. They asked for a pick Tennessee item, which if you don't know what that is, it is something that is made in your county, either unique to your county, um, handmade, homemade. Um, and they asked specifically that it would be found in a home pantry. So Donald and Jackie and Kay helped with this project. Thank you very much, because I could never have done this by myself. Um, and so Donald picked, uh, reached out to the Clark Farm, and we sent a jar of tomato juice fresh homemade tomato juice, and Donald almost drank it. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that we sent, they asked for a small display. Now when they said a small display, they wanted it 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. <laughs> so, and Mark, put everything you think about Houston County within that cube. And so we got together and came up with this. I'm going to pass it around. Um, like I said, Donald and Jackie and Kay really worked hard on this. We packaged it all up. We sent them a picture of what our little display should look like when they set it up. I asked them to send us a picture back of it being displayed. So if you have a chance to go to the Wilson County Fair, which starts August the 12th through the 21st, um, you can look for our little display. I'll pass it around. Let me, let me talk about the fair second. I lived in Wilson County until I moved here 20 plus years ago. It rivals the state fair. Yeah. It is a huge, well, it's a huge fair. Well, they're doing it together this year. The no. state fair and the Wilson County fair, yeah. they're combining it this yeah. year. So. That's great. so Houston County will be represented at the fair That's this year. Great. So we're excited about that. Um, I don't know how many other uh, counties have sent in things, but we only had like five days to get this together and send it in. So it gives a very short time frame. But we represented um, Irish Day, we represented the, our birthday, 150th birthday, um, and a couple of historic elements. So hopefully that'll be great. The second thing that I'm really excited about that I just found out today actually is, uh, has been approved. Um, since we got a new microfilm machine for the archives, the library has transferred all of their microfilm to us because their machine is older, they can't get parts for it anymore or service for it anymore. So now we have all of the microfilm in the archives and I reached out to the Tennessee State Library and Archives because they have an interlibrary loan program where any microfilm that they have at their facility that is um, eligible to be loaned out can be loaned out to a facility that's a Approved. Today I got that approval, so if you are doing research and you see a, mic a roll of microfilm on TSLA's website, I can order it and have it sent to Houston County. We keep it for 30 days. You can look for, at it as long as you want to, then I send it back. So that will help us here in Houston County then have to drive all the way to Nashville. So that's a great service that our archives now can actually provide to our citizens, researchers, and so, like I said, if you find something like that, just let me know. We can order it and have it brought here. And that's all I got. Are there any other announcements? Renetta? Okay, Sweet Tea and Southern Mark is not canceled this year. <laughs> it's going to be August 27th, 28th, and 29th. And we've got a bunch of good artists and some new ones. So y'all come see us. It's at the Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Erin. And expect to see everybody there. Okay, thank you. Any more announcements? Okay, so now what you all have come here for, uh, the program from the Arlington Cumberland Presbyterian Church presented by Will and Derek Pryor, and I'll turn the program over to them. Thank you.
It's not quite ready, but you still don't know. So, real quick, somebody handed me this a while ago. Thank you, by the way. This come out of the park for paper. August of 1933, this is talking about the Stoneman's Reformed Church and its origins. So anybody that doesn't know, the Cumberland Presbyterian denomination was started over Montgomery Bell State Park. That's the original wild house where the meeting was held and the Little Rock Church. And actually, that part of the park is not owned by the state of Tennessee. That part of the park is owned by the Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Most people don't know that I don't know, probably a couple of acres, two or three acres in there, the church still owns. But thank you for this. So, does TV end well? Can you just look on me? Two thousand and ten, we had our hundred and twenty fifth year here at Bill O'Neill. And we had a little celebration and made in Tanya. And Will was even in high school, and if that tells you anything, a bunch of high school kids, we were tasked with putting together a video for the church. So you can imagine, we're not historians, so. <laughs> uh, we've redone it since then, Will redid it. Uh, we were on the Christmas tour for the decoration two or three years ago, and Will kind of redid what we did. Kind of added to, just kind of updated a little bit. Uh, some of the pictures you're gonna see are just county pictures to kind of tell a story. So they're not even period correct. So for any period historians, don't freak out. Just play along, play along with the story. They're just there for a thing. Had limited material to work with. Right. I mean, they're just trying to tell you a story. But listen to the story. And then after that, we got a little presentation. We're just going to kind of walk back through some of the highlights of the same thing. If all of us at work, uh, where time you go? Oh, by the way, it's my anniversary today. That's my wife, Tanya. <laughs> 31 years ago today, we was married. Does anybody want to know? <laughs> turn these out. You may want to turn those back there. No, turn the first row out. <laughs> I was trying to get some of the glare off the screen so you all can see. We will can get the remote. We won't get this loud. Can't hear on the back, let me know. Houston County was established by an act of the legislature of Tennessee, January 21st, 1871. It was comprised from a portion of Stewart, Humphreys, and Dixon counties. As with the creation of any new local government, there was a great interest in the selection of the county seat. Four of the tracts of land considered were Hollister's Field, now Aaron, McMillan Farm, now Arlington, Bayland Farm, and West Farm. After the election, the results showed that McMillan Farm had received the most votes, and the county seat was placed at Arlington. The first court met April 3rd, 1871, at the Union Church at Aaron Station. In October 1871, the court ordered a frame house erected at the county seat at Arlington the cost of which was not to exceed $1,500. J.J. Potter, H.H. H. Bupo, and J. L. McMillan were appointed as magistrates for a commission. Their task was to draw up plans and specifications for the new courthouse, as well as advertise and receive bids for construction. The contract was awarded to G.W. Bupo for the sum of $1,440. Lot number 26 of the public square was purchased and would soon become the building you are standing in. The original structure was completed in the spring of 1872, and the young government of Houston County found itself with a brand new courthouse. The first court convened in this building, May 6, 1872. There were plenty of disadvantages to this location, the most notable being the steep grade of the land. The trains couldn't stop here, and had to continue on to Aaron Station, making it very inconvenient for passengers to get to the county seat. On August 1st, 1878, after occupying the building for only six years, the decision was made to move the courthouse from Arlington to Aaron, a much easier trip for visitors. Shortly after the decision was made, the records were moved to the new place of government in Aaron, the 
November 1st, 1878. After the county seat was moved, the courthouse in Arlington was used as a school and a church for a short time before it was finally abandoned. In September of 1885, the commissioners decided to sell this property in Arlington. On number 10, which was formerly the courthouse, would soon become the Arlington Cumberland Presbyterian Church. west 150 feet to Church Street, this north 100 feet to the beginning of the lot. The building was bought by the Arlington Covenant Presbyterian Church on November 22, 1885. 21 members from the RNCP congregation, two from Campground Congregation, and 11 on Confession of Faith became the charter members of the new congregation known as the Arlington Covenant Presbyterian Church. Five elders were elected and ordained. Nine of the eleven members that came on confession of faith were baptized. The five elders ordained at this time were J.H. Pulley, G.F. Connell, W.T. McMillan, B.A. Rowey, and Henry Shimwell. The following year, in the summer of 1886, the congregation decided to acquire a bell. On motion, a resolution of thanks adopted to wit resolved that this church tender brother John Harris thanks in high appreciation for his kindness in raising money and purchasing a bell for this church. It was made by the L.M. Rumsey Manufacturing Company in St. Louis, Missouri, which at the time of operation manufactured everything from fire engine hoses to railroad supplies. That same size number six bell is still in use today. like many others, often dealt with hard times. Finding ways to raise money wasn't always easy, but God in His wisdom and kindness always provided it. April 14, 1913. On motion, a committee of five was appointed to visit the homes of Arlington and collect chickens for the church. These chickens were to be sold, and the proceeds would be used for repairs to the church building. Maintenance and repairs weren't the only things the church raised money for. Visiting pastors holding revivals were often paid with special collections from the community. When it came to collecting, the task often fell to a pair of twins, Lola and Laura. An example of this can be found in Lola's notebook from October 1938, in which the community raised a grand total of $19.71, along with 60 cans of fruit, to pay a visiting pastor all in a revival. In April 1955, the session decided to break the facade of the church. Brother Thomas would provide the labor, and the church would provide the materials. Over the next 60 years, a number of changes and additions were made to the building. In February 1972, a discussion was had to add to the church building approximately 500 square feet, which included two restrooms. That same June, the contract was signed and approved with Tommy Nichols for the addition. Later that year, December 17, 1972, the session on motion agreed to make some changes to the plans of the new addition to the church building. They agreed to partition a small kitchen at the end of the fellowship hall, which would have cabinets and a water heater as requested by the CP Company. December 20th, 1984, a new addition to the church had just been completed. This included a fellowship hall, Sunday school rooms, and a pastor's study. The session expanded and accepted the building, making the final payment to the contractor, Carrie Powell. In June 2006, an unexpected remodel took place after a portion of the sanctuary ceiling fell. For the next nine months, worship services will be held in the fellowship hall. The congregation met and decided to replace the ceiling with wood, and to also add new lights, paint, flooring, and a sound system. Jonathan Mitchell would remove and replace the old ceiling, part of which was original to the old courthouse. 
For the next few weeks, the congregation met at night to stay in each and every board of the current seal of Kabaki. In the summer of 2010, the session decided to replace the old asphalt parking lot with concrete in preparation for homecoming. A few months later, Jenny Avery had completed the new concrete parking lot. The most recent change to the Arlington CP Church came in the spring of 2016, in which the church saw the addition of a dishwasher, food warmer, and other appliances all featured around a brand new central bar, and eventually took the shape of a new kitchen to better serve the fellowship dinners and other events held in the fellowship hall. Even though the building has undergone numerous changes and additions, the heart of the original courthouse still remains, as it continues to serve Houston County and the Arlington Covenant Presbyterian Church. Or were there other county buildings 
Does anybody have any idea? Because they sold all four, all fifteen lots. And I just always wondered. I know what was on lot ten because that's the only one I've ever been interested in. But maybe someday we can figure out what was on those other fourteen. Because the county owned the property. That's the way they had it all drawn out. And you can see right beside lot number nine over here in the corner. They're using it as a driveway. Yeah, that's an old alley that I can even remember. And then if you look right behind the church building, where I've got our property line shoved back against Mr. C's wall, that's what I based it off of, there's a good chance his wall probably is his property corner. There's probably an alleyway and then our property. So if you take that and kind of shift it on over a little bit more, it matches up better. So we've always known that we own the whole city street. Our property line is always going across the road. But that's just the way it is over time. There it is, kind of zoomed in. I just always thought it was ironic that the courthouse sat on Hill Street and Church Street and not on Main Street. And then eventually this became a church and we changed the name to Knight Street. But I don't know if anybody, has anybody ever seen a map where this is, Hill Street, Church Street, and that is Main Street, what we call Arlington, coming up to the post office? Which I guess it kind of makes sense. Uh, so as you heard, 1885, November the 22nd, that was the first official church meeting. Uh, we do have all of these documents. We have all the church minutes from 1885 to last week. We still got them all. So kind of, they're in kind of like little protective bags right now. So we don't touch them. They're just there. Don't breathe too hard. Yeah. But they are here. Uh, I'm going to read these names because some of you all know some of these people. You're probably can't tell them if you live here any time. They were not big about first names. They used a lot of initials. Always. But some of the members that transferred from the Aaron congregation to start this church were S.E. McMillan, N.C. McMillan, Betty McMillan, John Shimwell, R.E. Connell, Alice Connell, A.B. Connell, B.A. Roby, J.H. Pulley, S.M. Slaughter, W.H. Terrell, W.T. McMillan, J.K. Bone, M.E. Terrell, L.S. McMillan, Barney Wallace. I guess he didn't have a middle name, so he had to put his full name in there. Uh, G.F. Connell, E.A. Nichols, J.E. Shimwell, T.V. Shimwell, and Lucy Shimwell. And then what we all called in the video from campground, the actual official minutes say Wells Creek. That's what the church was called back then. That's the same Wells Creek became campground later. S.E. Knight and L.E. Knight came from there. And then the ones that were on, as the video also said, Confession of Faith and some were baptized, were M.B. Slaughter, G.W. Knight, William Henry Nichols, W.B. Pulley, W.H. Shimwell, M.J. Pulley, E.C. Roby, Russ Buchanan, or Buchanan, with an A, by the way. I know we have two Buchanan cemeteries in the county, one with an O and one with an A. Uh, Sally A. Miller, Georgia Florence Connell, and G.W. Slaughter. And then the other five there at the bottom were like the elders. Uh, from this, I'm just going to jump through here. I just stopped here in July of 1886. I just happened to be reading this when I was looking for the bell stuff. Uh, the building committee was as happy as they could be because they had repaired the church and the church still had $2.52 left in the treasury. <laughs> now I'm sure in 1886, $2.52 was probably a whole lot more money than it is to me today. But still, $2.52. And they're going to need it because they also agreed to pay some, some pastor $50 a year that year. <laughs> going to be paid on the board. So they're going to need every bit of that. Uh, and then, of course, as you heard, July 1886, is Brother Joe M. Harris acquired us a bell. And it came from the L.M. Rumsey Manufacturing Company. Now, that is supposedly a rendering off the Internet of what the L.M. Rumsey Manufacturing Company looked like during that time period. That's where I got that. So don't take it for gospel, but... To me, it basically was a foundry because it talked about farm implements, 
steam engines, boilers, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I did find where prior to 1881, there was an L.M. Rumsey, Rum, Rumsey and Company that started in New York and then split off a branch to St. Louis, Missouri and became what is L.M. Rumsey Manufacturing Company. Uh, it is a number six bell. It's right up there. Ringing every Sunday, it rang on the birthday. Uh, you see the rope is older, is newer than the bell. Because <laughs> the last time it broke, somebody had to go <coughs> out. Put the rope on. Six three is two levels when you get up through that tiny little hole so, up there. If you want to know how to get there, if everybody wants to turn around. Hey Charlie, turn the back light on for me just no, they're right inside the door. Right here. Yeah, flip that should be first like close switch. To you. There you go. Y'all see that little hole? First off, you gotta be kind of skinny. Uh, you can get up through there if you're big like me. It's getting out. It's a trouble. First off, you get up through there, and that's what that first picture is. It's just looking down. Just, you know, you can get up. Once you get up into the crawl space or the attic or whatever you want to call it, there's another little set of ladders. It'll take you up through a little trap door and actually get you up into the tower. Get you on the outside of the roof, basically, but you're inside the tower. And it does, like I said, it does still rain. I see it rain. <laughs> Somebody has to climb up in there and unturn it over. So, but it still rains. Uh, that was true about raising money for the chickens. That is actually in the session minutes. Uh, apparently, chickens were a lot of value back then. You all know way more about that than I do. But that actually did happen. Uh, I wasn't sure whether to put this in here or not, but me and Tanya had a big time reading this kind of stuff. <laughs> Apparently, back in the day, if you were misbehaving in the church, people would come see you. <laughs> now, this one is from 1938. It just says, it didn't name any names. Before 1938, let me tell you, they named names. I'm kin to most of them. <laughs> I will tell you this, from about 1885 to about 1910, Apparently there was a pretty big 4th of July celebration every year because it had a lot to do with drinking on the 4th of July. Somebody being drunk in public, I guess the public had a lot to do with it, I don't know. But, but yeah, they would come see you and talk to you <laughs> if they thought you were not acting right. Uh, it probably was a good thing. I don't know, maybe we need more of that today. <laughs> Some people being held accountable. But I did put this in here. Yeah, we are just a church of sinners like everybody else. We're not perfect. But it is kind of neat to read. Back in the day when they were naming names, I guess it wouldn't be if your name was in there. But. <laughs> <laughs> These are the twins. I think a lot of people here probably knew the twins. Lola and Laura. They were school teachers. Uh, Lola was never married. Miss Laura was. Uh, married Mr. Lloyd Roby. That is her book from 37, 38. There might be some 1936 in there. It's laying in here on the table. We still got it. It was in that box of stuff. Just happened to be laying in the bottom of it. And this was also in there talking about there's all kinds of stuff they took up money for. You can thumb through it and they would be taking up money to pay the light bill. Or they would be taking up money to do this or taking up money to do that. And just look, you know, you can find they kept up with who donated what. So, you know, if I could read all of her handwriting, I'm sure. But just look at the amounts, you know, we're talking 1938, you know, somebody was able to give a dime, somebody was able to give, oh, excuse me, two dollars, a nickel, 25 cents, they'd take anything. And apparently preachers work for fruit. Because this was, I think you might be able to see it up at the top, but it said Brother Davis and Douglas. So I think they had two pastors that week or maybe been over a two week stretch, I'm not sure. But they did collect 60 cans of fruit that would be split between the two of them, and I'm assuming they probably split that $19.71. Uh, $19.51. I put this in here because the ceiling 
is not, the ceiling wasn't always shaped this way. Back in the late, like 49 or 50, the church almost blew over. And Uncle Butch will tell you, somewhere there's a picture of brace poles holding up the church. It's trying to lean. So they agreed to straighten the church and add, it's kind of hard to see in this picture, but if you see the bracing that's basically coming down, that's what these are. The original ceiling height is the center. And that's where the original ceiling was. You can barely see it in the picture there. Maybe a little hard to see when the ceiling actually fell and you get a third look. So the original ceiling height is in the center. These are just braces that were put in in the 50s because the church almost blew over. That was the only, that's the only reason it's shaped like it is today. Uh, they did brick the church in 1955. And uh, I don't know who Brother Thomas was, but... Apparently, he could lay brick. This is just a picture. I call it maintenance day. Every church does this, I'm sure. As maintenance. I don't know what year this is from. But I do know the young man standing in the door is a young Harold Butch Knight. So however old he is now to however old he was then. I don't know. Looking at the back end of that truck, I'm going to say late 60s or awful, awful early 70s looking at the back end of the pickup truck. I don't know who anybody else is. It just looks like they're having a work day. But the store and there can have to be in a yes. 50s or 60s. Yeah, the store is there. While well, I'm thinking about it, there used to be a store that sat right across the road. For, I don't know, when I was growing up, it was a TV repair place and something else. And something else. But it used to be a general store, correct? Right. Back in Uncle Butch's younger days. Uh, in 71, that's when we added the first addition. Uh, basically, two restrooms, fellowship hall, and you saw the little kitchen. Uh, to tell you how much the road has changed here, you can see, used to, you went down one, two, three steps to a sidewalk. You could walk all the way to the end of the sidewalk towards the road, and then you had to go down two more steps. Now the road's almost as high as the church. Just over time, that's how much the road's been built up. I can even remember that. That's just kind of what the old fellowship hall looked like in the 70s. Uh, I don't know how we all sat and got in there and ate. We still had the little kitchen, but we did. Uh, like I said, this was in 84 when we added the classrooms on the far end, and that's pretty much the way it looks today. Uh, this is pretty much, this is what we did in 84, the carry towel went for us. After that, we did kind of do a little bit first rendition to the old fellowship hall. Basically turns it into a class, couple of classrooms, uh, nothing major. 2006, this is when we found out a lot about the ceiling of the church. The ceiling did fall. Right about where you're set. Right there. Right about right there is where it's right about where it's set. That's where the ceiling fell. So that's when we decided to take it all down. And that's when you could see the original ceiling was up above that ceiling. So part of the original ceiling was still there. Uh, in case you're wondering, the church is not square. <laughs> they found that out real quick when you try to put a new ceiling in. And if you ever tried to drive a nail through a hundred year old piece of oak that's been seasoned, that didn't work. So they wound it up, Jonathan Mitchell did it. They scabbed boards onto all the rafters and we basically just went to the back and pulled a string to the front and said, that's gonna be, it's not level, but that's gonna be straight. So that's why it is. But, so really you can see that the ceiling is not at the top of the windows. The ceiling matches the roof line outside. That should be the top of the ceiling. And then we really did meet here, right here where you're sitting. All these pews were out. We had staining parties, and we probably stained for five weeks to get all those boards stained. We would stain, clear coat, let them dry, put them in the put-up pile. 
we did that for about four or five weeks and got them all stained and then Jonathan came in here and they did their thing and we finally got them all put up. Uh, and then in 2016, Sam Fazell kind of redid the fellowship hall again and basically made it a more usable kitchen space. As Will said in the video, a bar, we don't have happy hour. <laughs> Mama would be more happy if he said island, but he called it a bar. Post church communion. Post church communion. <laughs> At the bar. At the bar. <laughs> but uh, that was done. And then last and not least, I'm going to say in 20, oh, well, we probably actually did that. I can't remember if we did that before we did the kitchen or not, but. We did both of them, did add a new sidewalk and a new front kind of concrete for the porch. And then Sean Nichols actually built the actual wood part of the porch there that you see. And that basically gets us up to today's time. Uh, you can turn the lights back on, can you? It gets us back up to today's time. Uh, you saw a part there in wheels. <coughs> A little bit looked like an old home movie plan. My granddaddy had, we still got them. I got them at my house because Uncle Bush let me have them for a little while in the projector. We had 50 rolls of 8 millimeter film and the projector to play them on. So, I you know a cheap way to do that is cell phones are so good now, you get in a dark room and get it right. That's the way we've converted on most of ours. We hadn't got them all. Uh, in the Far, what I'm going to call the Far Fellowship Hall. You're welcome to go in there and look. There's books laying on tables. Go in there, there's even cookies. But there'll be a TV playing, and it'll have all of the church part of those home movies playing. You're just going to sit there and scroll. You may see yourself. You may see somebody you know. Uh, you're going to get to see Ronnie Bracci with hair. <laughs> Ronnie Bracci has hair. He is in there. He is on film. I saw it. I think it's about like. 16 or 17 minutes of mm -hmm. film. It was on 50 different rolls, so we just had to cut that little part. Uh, another thing, just to let the historical side know, once me and Will get all this done, we'll make you a copy. On those same 50 rolls, there are probably 8 to 10 total minutes of different Irish Day parades from the early 70s. And now, you have to know how my granddaddy filmed with eight millimeter cameras. It's kind of like watching a bad version of Cops sometimes. <laughs> you have to take motion sickness pills before you watch it because he gets, he gets to looking instead of filming. But I do know there's one part on there that has a Aaron Bank float, which has my mother in law, who has passed now, Shirley Harris. She was on it. Miss Kathy Parchman, Laverne Harris, Miss Betty McKinnon. And their hair was this long, <laughs> and their skirts were about this long. Riding on a float, so that had to be in the early, early 70s. But there's some of that, and a lot of that was taken when I was probably five, six, seven years old, so that would have put it in the early 70s. But when we get that, we'll get you all copied. You know, it, it may not be more than five minutes worth, and I'm not sure what year any of it was taken <laughs> because it's all mixed up, but you're welcome to have a copy of it when we get that done. And other than that, that's all we have. <clears throat> All right, my granddaddy was a carpenter in Clarksville. He worked for Mr. Isaac Buck, who built houses for a long time, and then eventually he became a carpenter for the city of Clarksville before he retired. These windows came out of something that they tore down in Clarksville. Is that right on the book? No. Or where did they come from? I don't know. <laughs> I know he brought them in here somewhere, didn't he? Yes. Some group got together. I don't know if it was. Women's Fellowship Hall or, group or, or what. And uh, basically, what you had was just plain glass, and they decided they wanted to make it look more spiritual, more moral, whatever you want to call it. And uh, they picked out two colors blue and uh, whatever that is. is. And uh, after work in Clarksville all week, he'd come over here on Saturday or Sunday or one by night, and he replaced each and every one of the clear glasses with the 
ones you see in there now. We're going on a wing and a prayer uh, with some of the uh, pines of black because uh, I guess we were kind of rowdy when we were my age a little more. And there's some BB holes in uh, <laughs> some of the windows and some are broken. And where the door is to the fellowship hall used to be another window. So that window has donated its life. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we're about out of life. There's very few paintings left. Uh, just so you know, there is a basement under this church, hand dug. Uh, it's not very deep. They hit some hard pan that was too hard to dig. So if I go down there, I got to be careful. We got a duck when we get to a cross beam. But there is a hand dug basement. That's where Sunday school classes were when I was little. Until we built this, well, even after we built the first part of the fellowship hall, but all the way up until '84, <coughs> Sunday school. And they used to think it was a big room. Well, it's at, it actually was a bunch of little rooms tied together. And the cool part was to get all the way to the back and have somebody turn the lights out. It's pretty dark down there, and then try to find your way back out. <laughs> but now it's just used for storage. And my mother would have a heart attack if anybody went down there because it's probably not this perfectly straight. Room, you know, but it is a hand dug basement. Uh, there's water that doesn't come in from the street. It comes up from the ground sitting on top of this hill. It's got a sump pump that's pumping water all the time. So I don't know if we, I guess we struck oil or water <laughs> one. <laughs> but there is a hand dug basement under this church that was dug probably in the 50s, Uncle Butch, 40s, 50s. I was born in 69. Uh, I, 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 told, in here. This, I was in uh, the Ben Barnes class. Uh, she just had her last child, so you can figure that out from the number of children she had back. Okay. So I, I guess it was about 1949 or 50. When they dug their basement? Yeah. Basically, they just cut a hole in the floor and started digging and shoving them out in buckets. Well, where the steps go up, that was the ramp to start So, outside the back. But if anybody knows what was in those other 14 lots, I'd sure like to know them. Because, I mean, the county owned it. It's in the records that the county owned that property. I just never knew what was there. <coughs> some, some of you all are way smarter than us about to figure that one out. But that's all we got. And there are, like I said, some of those old minute books, every, a lot of stuff is in the fellowship hall. And there is some cookies and stuff like that. And for sure, go watch the movie. At least play through one time. Sit in there and get you something to drink. We'll make sure the movie's running. And you might see somebody you know. And that's all we got. Any other questions for the products? You want to hear the bell ring? I'll do it because if I turn it over, then I gotta go fix it anyway. So it's my own. Hey we all sir. It is hard to hear. Because we insulated the ceiling when it fell in 2006, and now it's hard to hear sometimes. <laughs> but it will rain. You don't have to open that one, just one of them's enough. Over here. If you hear a thud, if you hear a thud, then I did it wrong. Manufacturing in 85. 
So you would think in 86 it was at least halfway new, right. or lightly used anyway. Yeah, that was probably made everything, like fire engine hoses, toilets, toilet parts, railroad tracks, anything. They made it all, and apparently they made bells. bells. And apparently they did pretty good, because <laughs> it's still, still there. there. Okay, we'd like to thank you all for <coughs> letting us come to your, to your church, our old courthouse, and we appreciate the invitation and the continuation of our 150th. So thank you very much. <coughs> our next meeting, Tuesday, September 14th at 7 o'clock, is stated in the county address by County Mayor James Bridges at the Erin United Methodist Church Fellowship Hall. Um, and you can check your minutes for, it's usually on the second Tuesday night, we have the others for the rest of the year there, uh, COVID permitting us to attend. <coughs> and we thank you all for coming today. We will adjourn. Thank, thank you. you. <coughs> <coughs>